and that and that's the perspective of it because one of the things that happened is the laundry workers made the decision on their own to say we're going to do this everybody else on a voluntary basis came forward and said we're going to support you and once they walked out the door those people were affected by the fact that they had walked out the door left their employment and so therefore they too ended up having um, a part of anything that may have come out of that as far as fines or being charged or so it affected them directly once they walked the picket lines the employer on an ongoing basis had the security people taking pictures making sure they knew exactly who was on the line and everybody was affected so it is true we weren't we did not have the ability at the end to say Here's our group of people normally when you do is you've got a, a local that is affected by a strike. You have a vote by these people. They walk out and these are the people that will decide when they walk back in. In this case, uh, it, it was such a mixed bag and there was no control of it. Uh, we did have the list of people, of course, that walked the picket lines because they would receive picket pay uh, for the time they spent on the line and had the captains and, and that system was working. But when it came to the ability to vote, uh, it got down to if you were a QP member working in a hospital, you pretty much had an ability to be at the meeting and vote on it. And, and so when it comes to taking a vote, everybody had, a sta had some stake in it, but they would have a different. That's right. Uh, it affected some different at different levels. Gone either one way or the other. That's right. It's quite interesting. So a lot of people, their, uh, their relief came when they found out that uh, the peace pact was formulated and it was part and parcel of the memorandum. Okay, now I'm fine. I, 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 I came out on an emotional basis to help these people that we felt uh, were being wronged and now I have the ability to go back in and I'm not going to be punished for that. So there was a, a large group of people but that was their main concern. Some of them was concerned about the ability for the employer to contract out because uh, at that time, it was only, the laundry was only the beginning of the process. Uh, there was other groups that were on the list that also were going to be directly affected. Once that sort of peace pact was uh, achieved or arrived at, that essentially ended all the help the laundry workers were going to get. That's right. Because uh, now you're not going to get them to go back out again. In Once they went back in, the given the, the chance to vote yes or no, and mm -hmm. they said no, we're staying out. They'd have been on their own. They would have been on their own. Public opinion was starting to shift, uh, perspectively. Uh, the newspapers have been very uh, generous in their approach to this and and their documentation and uh, their publication of what was going on, but that was starting to change a little bit in the papers. And the other thing is there was a strong feeling, uh, at least amongst us that were at the negotiating table, that the amnesty was coming to an end. In other words, that if it continued beyond uh, the time frame of that meeting on the Thursday evening, that now the fines would come in, people would start getting arrested. The, the, the dynamics would change. Yeah. So, so in, in fact, there was a 10-day illegal strike without the board having implemented the, the powers that they have to uh, order it back. And That's right. And, and, and I, uh, my memory fails me on if the Labor Board actually uh, made a ruling that uh, we, were, we were actually illegally on strike. I believe there might have been something to that degree, but it was never enacted on. And the, I think the, uh, if I remember correctly, the Calgary Regional Health Authority's next stop was going to be the courts. So what, what, what prevented them from taking, you know, we've seen many strikes, you get an injunction and the next thing you know the, the police are there to enforce it. What, what was it that, that allowed the labor, that caused the labor board to sort of sit back with all this authority they have? This is an illegal, illegal strike. This isn't even a legal strike. For <laughs> it's just a, a, it was just a, a wild cat walkout. That's really what it was. Yeah. What prevented the board from, from uh, whacking you guys? 
And do you that, have the authority? That is an, I don't have the answer uh, on, on that. The speculation I can only see is that because uh, within a few days of the strike taking place and the public momentum uh, that went on, uh, and the government now starting to step in on the fringes of what was happening, and the government also putting themselves into a position of, uh, actually, they, they were even in, uh, um, Ralph Klein was even on the news over the issue of the of this strike itself. I believe he said something about, I'm not blinking, and he had talked about it, but there was also, in the background, the government was now starting to make moves that they realized they had to do something with health care. And uh, during the strike, I don't know if it was the Monday or the Tuesday, they announced that they uh, actually put another $100 million into health care. But it has nothing to do with the strike, but we're putting $100 million into health care. And Ralph Klein had also been in contact with the division president at that time, Terry Mutton. But again, was it not the public support? It was public support. I mean, that's what governments, mm -hmm. that's what they saw. I mean, they, they, had, they had all the power in the world. But they, it must have been without the public support. The public support, there was some public support that um, felt for the laundry workers and when they started to hear the story, but a lot of the public support was created by the Calgary Regional Health Authorities because the Calgary Regional Health Authorities' arrogance towards the public, towards healthcare workers, and I'm not just talking about laundry workers, the nurses, the doctors, the uh, anybody involved and connected with, with the healthcare, uh, their arrogance on them just shoving and ramming everything down that they said this is the way it's going to be and that's the way it is. And there was very little access to the board itself uh, and uh, therefore the board was trying to run healthcare like a business. And, uh, and I think the thing that the laundry workers sparked that in everybody and the thing, there was a bit of a, an embarrassment, I know, with the doctors and, and other groups because it took this group at the bottom of the pile when it comes to health care actually having the ability to stand up to the board. So a lot of people seen it as standing up to the Calgary Regional Health Authorities, standing up to the Calgary Regional Health Authorities meant you were standing up to the government because it was their board.